Marlo Thomas and Phil Donahue. It's uh, so very sweet that we were asked to remember Bella together because she really wanted us to be together. She was quite the romantic. When I was taking my time trying to decide whether or not to take the step of getting married, Bella nagged me terribly about it. She was crazy about Phil. And she used to holler at me, watch, she said, you think you're gonna do better than this? <laughs> And she was thrilled when we got married. In fact, uh, she and Gloria gave me a bridal shower, which was hilarious in its own right. <laughs> and uh, we've been married about, I guess, five or six weeks, and I got onto an airplane one day. I didn't know that Bella was on the plane, and this voice came hollering from the back of the place, she says, when are you gonna have a baby? <laughs> And so I yelled back at her. I said, I got married. Make Gloria have the baby. <laughs> she loved that. She really did. She really did. And I asked her. I asked her one time, I said, you know, Gloria, I mean, Belle, I've always been so scared about getting married. And I don't know how you do it. How do you put it all together? How do you stay who you are as a woman? How do you become a good wife to a man? And, and, and how do you balance that out? And she said, great sex. <laughs> I want you to know I've really tried. <laughs> We've been married 17 years and that really delighted her. I always heard from her on my anniversary and uh, she'd call me up and she'd say, it's Delft, one of which she sent me a gift. It's Delft. <laughs> I know, I know, I know it's Delft. <laughs> Uh, anyway, we've collected all of her gifts and uh, they're very romantic and very sweet. So I, uh, I, did, I did marry the guy that she wanted me to marry and I'm glad I did. And today I'm wondering or I'm going to find a woman in my life as important as Bella. I called Bella for everything. She was always there with words of wisdom and inspiration and indignation. She was a friend, a colleague, a mentor, a role model, a bully, an information booth. And tomorrow I know I'm gonna reach for the phone and I'm gonna have to stop short, not once, but 10 times. People who say Bella's the one with a hat didn't know Bella. Bella wore dozens of hats. And Bella shielded all of us with her broad brim. I never met anyone who sustained a sense of justice an outrage for so long. And that fire in her belly was an eternal flame and a source of warmth for all of us. I will miss Bella. I don't know quite how we're going to live without her, but I do know that right now she is having a few laughs with her beloved Martin and a certain big nose angel with a cigar in his mouth. I send you all my love. God bless you. Bella could spot a phony across a crowded room. Nobody had a detector for pomposity and pretense <clears throat> quite as well tuned. I found myself seated next to her at an uh, occasion that was to be a, an evening with Abba Iban that evolved into a very thoughtful, somber reflection on the life of Prime Minister Rabin. And as the movie stars got up and began to speak, I was instructed as well about her impatience with oration. Because sooner or later, four or five sentences in, 
to the speech that referred to the man who, without whom, the future of peace in the Middle East and the region for our children would be ensured so that all of us may live in the next century. And her voice would say for many around her to hear, good, sit down. <laughs> Sure enough, the movie star kept going. And the next speaker would take a breath about five sentences in, and I would hear her say, good, sit down. So I come here well instructed. And to say very briefly that on her many appearances on my television program, every time, I'd walk out there with her, and there would be an audience from the Midwest that would look at her somewhat askance. Younger people in the audience looking for Tom Cruise looked very disappointed to see <laughs> this woman with a large hat walking onto the Donahue stage. And when the program was reaching its final minutes, every other hand was in the air. And when the program ended, the lines to speak to her grew very, very long, and she waited to speak to the questions and the needs of everyone who personally petitioned her. And when we look up to realize that so many of us and our friends who took part in my decade of awareness was the 60s, when we fought and we sang, and so many of us claimed burnout and became guitar players or organic gardeners or got into yoga this was the woman who kept on keeping on and to realize that this began as a teenager in the 30s it makes us appreciate all the more this magnificent remarkable force the energy of which will be expressed on into the next century and beyond for all our children's children and now I hear her voice saying good Sit down. <laughs>